Hey guys, welcome to another video. Now this one is sadly not such good news. We managed to break the Civic, even though it's not even been tuned yet. Now it was my fault. It was a mistake on my side. Basically what happened was uh, I was testing the car after running it in with the previous tune. Now I mean the tune that was on here should have been very uh, accurate because the only thing we changed is the intake manifold and the cylinder head. We put a single overhead cam VTEC head on here. So there is the solenoid. Now, the compression ratio has increased because of that, because the dome on this cylinder is slightly smaller than the non-VTEC, which it was tuned for. So initially I set the timing uh, just a little bit retarded to keep it safe. And then we installed the wideband sensor so I could check the air fuel ratio and it was running rich, which is safe. So I thought to myself, let's set the timing to zero. Let's set the ignition timing to zero where it should be. So I got a timing light, did that, set it to zero. And then I actually tested the car again, uh, got into boost a few times, felt really good. The only problem was I did not consider the fact that we've now increased the compression ratio, meaning we should probably have run a little bit more conservative timing. And I didn't think about that. I set it back to where it was. We did a few pulls and everything felt fine. It actually felt really good. But after a few pulls, as you guys can see, there's some water marks over here and here on the gearbox. That's just because it blew the head gasket and it was starting to push compression into this overflow and then it was starting to spray out of here. Now, initially I did not notice what the problem was. I thought maybe let's just retalk the head studs. That might work. And it did. I took off the valve cover, retalked the head studs and everything was fine again. I was driving the car again and it wasn't pushing any air into the coolant system anymore. However, I then did not consider the fact that the timing is still set to where it was on the previous setup. So I ran it like that again, went into boost again, and the same thing happened. It blew the head gasket again. So the car does actually run now. Uh, if you don't boost, the leak, the compression or the head gasket leak is very, very small. It just pushes small bubbles into here. And the coolant system still holds pressure and, you know, it's still full if you check it. Because obviously this is the highest point, so it'll push all the air into this area and then push it out into the bottle so it doesn't really create a problem if you don't drive it far but we are obviously not going to drive it like that I've got a new head gasket for it and yes it is just a aftermarket head gasket this was quite cheap it was like let's say the equivalent of 25 dollars and it does say the word genuine on it i don't really recognize this brand name but it does look exactly the same like the head gasket that's in here it's like a three layer steel one and I haven't had much issues with them before, apart from when I do something stupid. So yeah, that's actually my fault. The car was running fine and boosting fine as well with the retarded ignition. I actually marked it, so that little mark there. If these two line up, then we are basically the timing is exactly set. So you guys can see I retarded it again, but obviously we already blew the gasket. So there isn't really much we can do about it now. We already messed it up. So what I'm thinking to do is... Let's change the head gasket. Now it is quite a job, but it isn't really that difficult. It sounds way more intimidating than what it really is. Now going over to the engine, one thing you have to do is drain the coolant because obviously this pipe is connected to the cylinder head as well as the one back here. Next thing you do is quite easy. Three bolts on the distributor and that can come off. You can leave it plugged in, leave it in this area. These just pull out really easy. And then you have to consider a few plugs. So if you have VTEC, you'll have the VTEC plug back here. You'll have two temperature plugs here on the side of the head. You have to take them out. That one there might actually hide from you and you don't want to just pull on it because you might damage the wire. The other thing is you'll have to take this pipe off. And then, of course, you can leave the intake manifold on or you can take it off. If you leave the intake manifold on the head, you obviously need to take everything off the intake manifold. Now, that is quite a lot of things. It's the fuel feed in and the fuel return line. It is the injector wires. It is your plugs on your sensors this vacuum line, the throttle cable, there's a whole bunch of stuff, the intake pipe. So what I'm going to do is actually just take the intake off. It's quite easy in terms of you have these bolts here. And then there's one tricky one, which is down this hole. You can see it just down that hole. Now it's quite tricky to uh, get to this one. So that's the only catch with taking the intake manifold off is getting to that bolt back there. However, it's not impossible. And I think in my case, because I have quite a lot of things attached to the intake manifold, and this will also stop it from coming off this brace. So what I think what I'm going to do is just uh, take those bolts off, move it back and then zip tie something so it hangs from this bar. The same kind of thing we're going to do on the exhaust side. This is actually not so bad. 
take off all these bolts, the whole thing can slide off. You might have to disconnect a few things. In my case, there's a turbo here. So we have oil lines, we have the O2 sensor, but I don't want to mess with any of that. So what I'm going to do is slide it off, maybe put something over here and hang it from a piece of wire or a big zip tie. Another thing is this one bolt, this bolt bolts into the head and the block down there. So you have to take out just this bolt. You should be able to leave everything as is, but take this bolt off and then you can actually start by taking off these bolts for the valve cover. Once you get the valve cover loose, you can take the valve cover off and then you can take off this cover over here. Now this is only the top part you have to take off. Now there's two bolts holding it on. You have that bolt over there and you have a bolt here behind the dipstick tube. Now there is two things you need to keep in mind and that is your timing. So I would recommend making a mark on the pulley and the belt so you can put the belt back exactly where it was because if you jump it too forward or backwards your valve timing is going to be out. Same thing here, make a mark as you guys can see I already made a mark so that mark there and this mark here if they line up this uh, ignition is set. But I mean other than that it's not really that difficult once you have all those things loose you can actually get to the bolts and take out the bolts without disassembling anything inside the head. If you have a double overhead cam B series, you have to sadly take out the cams as well, which makes it a bit more difficult. But the single cams, you can get through the bolts without taking out anything. So once the valve cover is off, you can take the bolts out. And if everything is loose around it, you can take the head off. If you overheated your car, you may actually need to check the surfaces on both the block and the head because it might warp if you overheat it. However, I know that this engine did not overheat. I knew it basically stretched the head studs because we were running a bit too aggressive of our ignition timing, combining that with boost and a slightly higher compression setup. And that's why we started pushing compression into the coolant. So I'm going to put it on a time lapse and then I'll show you guys once we have the head off. Okay guys, so everything is loose now. The theory is that I can now literally just pull the head off. I actually used a big zip tie over here to just hold on to the exhaust manifold so it doesn't fall down. I put something under the exhaust as well so you don't put all the force on the hangers at the bottom. The intake can just slide back. It's being held on by this and it's laying on the uh, thermostat housing. So I should be able to just lift the cylinder head off now. Let's see if that is the case. Looks like yes. Okay, so we have the head off. So let's quickly inspect the block. I didn't have a look at it quickly, and I think this is best case scenario for a bad scenario because it looks like it was blowing the head gasket. And what would happen then is it would push a bit of compression into the water jacket, hence why there was air coming into the cooling system. And then under boost, it would do actually quite a bit, so much so that the coolant would spray out of the overflow bottle in this area. So it didn't mix oil and water, but it did push compression into the water jackets and probably the other way around, hence why the pistons are a little bit wet. Now it was running very rich, so that's possibly why we have a bit of buildup on the pistons. However, one thing I was very scared of was actually detonation and damage on the pistons. Because if the engine detonates continuously, what will happen is you'll start melting the pistons. And if we look at these pistons, you can actually see they are all similar color, similar condition. And I don't see any marks from detonation or anything on them. Now I did actually make a huge mess um, by putting the head here and then everything leaked out. So we have it over here now. And I must say, once again, I think it is a best case scenario out of a bad scenario. If you look at the gasket over here, you can see this is on the back of the engine. I believe the head gasket sits like this. Actually, no. I believe the head gasket sits just like this. The head gasket was blown in this area. There, there, and here. So yeah, it looks like changing the head gasket is going to solve the problem. It did just blow the head gasket. It didn't overheat or anything like that, so we won't have a warped head. I did have a quick look at this. Oh, I can't look at it for too long because the oil will start going everywhere. 
but if we look over here you can see the valves all look fine chambers all look the same now yes they are very black but that is just because the car is running very rich because we haven't actually taken it back for a tune but you know other than that i'm actually quite happy with what we are seeing here like i said that okay so something really stupid just happened i was balancing the head on this part of the pulley so it was standing up from this side and then i was holding it by this little uh, hole over here the problem is there's oil in there so it slipped out of my hand and fell and these two intake valves were open now luckily it did have this dalpin in here and that hit the uh, ground first and also luckily it was on this cardboard and it only fell over however i'm scared that i bent these two intake valves because they were open so what i did is i sprayed some parts cleaner breaking parts cleaner in this chamber and I'm going to let it sit here for a while and see if it actually leaks past. And I must say it actually looks like we are okay. It doesn't look like it's leaking past. So yeah, that was really stupid, but it looks like we got lucky. I'm just going to do the other ones as well, just to be sure. Okay guys, it's a few hours later. I actually spent some time cleaning this up. I used this little 3M uh, scuff pad. It's not very abrasive. Uh, I just used that to clean up all the uh, old residue from the old head gasket. It has this black coating on it that tends to stick to the surfaces. That's all clean now. I cleaned up the intake surface and the exhaust surface over here. We have the head gasket. And luckily for us, D-Series, you can't put the head gasket on wrong. So if you try to put it on wrong, you'll quickly see that the holes actually don't line up. The middle holes do line up, but the ones at the end, like that one and this one, won't line up. So you have to actually put it on the right way. You don't have an option, which is good because I've seen a lot of people install the B20 head gaskets upside down. And that can cause some issues because you can see this blocks uh, coolant flow because you want more coolant flow coming into the head on the pump side than on the other side. Anyway, I'm happy with this. Let's quickly have a look at the cylinder head. And yes, this was a huge disaster, but I've also cleaned up the bottom of this. It was quite dirty, but it is now very smooth. I've sprayed it with part and brake cleaner. I've cleaned up all the areas where you could see where the head gasket was blown. And all the surfaces are nice and clean now. Now one thing that's very important is these dowels. You must have them. If you don't have them, your head gasket and cylinder head won't bolt down in the correct spot. So you need to have them. And they go into the two middle holes in the front. That basically keeps the head gasket from moving as you can see now it's quite a tight fit and it's the same story with the cylinder that will also be guided to sit exactly in place with these two del pins so what i'm going to do now is just put the head back on and then we can start bolting everything back the only other thing is we need to get a new intake gasket because i ripped the intake gasket on this one i'm going to put the cylinder head on now then put the head studs in and then we're going to torque them i believe it's 22 foot pounds and then 51 foot pounds and of course you go in a sequence, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you always go from the center, crisscross outwards until you have done all of them. So you first do 22 and then you do 51. I'll put it on screen what the actual torque is just because I might be wrong now. But that's basically the process. Quite easy. I actually don't need the mark anymore, but as you guys can see, I made a mark on the belt over here. And we have the mark on the pulley. But I actually did turn the engine so I can clean up the pistons and stuff. So I am going to set the timing again. Okay, so we have the timing set now. I just slipped the belt back on. Let me see if I can show you guys. So if you look over here, you'll see right here on the pulley, there's a little mark there. And that mark lines up with the mark on the plastic cover back there. Same on this side. 
if you look on the other side there's an arrow on the plastic cover there and a mark on the pulley over here there's also one down here so there's also one here you can see this little arrow on the cover down here and then on the pulley there's a mark as well now i transferred these from the original pulley because these aftermarket pulleys doesn't come with it however it comes with this and this indicates the top now your original one will have a mark here that says up and then it'll have the two marks and the one at the bottom now sometimes you have to be sure because you might have different marks in my case the one down here says p28 and it says p08 over here now this cylinder it is a p08 so i went off these marks and not off the mark there then if you look down here now you can see this little this little plastic side thing so once that is lined up that must line up with this little mark on the pulley over here and that does and then what i did is i just slipped the belt back on it was quite tricky but now the mechanical timing of the engine is set then if you look at the ignition timing i set it to zero and then marked everything here so that mark and this mark when they line up this will be set to zero however i am retarding it a bit okay and everything is back together i put water in the radiator uh, just water for now because if something is wrong and i put coolant in here obviously the coolant would drain out and you'd waste it so i just put water in here for now i am going to flush it i did get some engine flush because with the head gasket leaking we had some oily residue in the coolant system so i'm just going to flush it afterwards with some radiator flush to make sure the system is nice and clean and then if it's not leaking anymore we'll put coolant in it uh, the way i knew the gasket was uh, blown is it kept on pushing tiny bits of air bubbles into this reservoir over here so if the car's at temperature you can look in here and push bubbles into the overflow and then if i boosted the car you can see the water splatter here that's from actually water spraying out of here so that's how i knew the head gasket was blown it didn't actually smoke or mix oil and water or struggle to start or anything like that so i mean i probably wouldn't even have known if this car wasn't boosted so i'm just going to start the car now get it up to temperature and then check in the reservoir and see if we have any bubbles in there if we don't then the problem is probably solved okay so we're going to start it now Okay, so the car is idling, nothing appears to be out of place. I am going to just need this, add some more water there, make sure the cooling system doesn't have any air in it. And then once everything is warmed up, we'll close the cap and see if there's any air bubbles coming into the cooling system. Okay guys, so it looks like we are okay. If I look in here, there's no bubbles coming from the overflow. We're normally at temperature where it is now both pipes are heating up there would be some bubbles in the uh, overflow can yeah so I think we're good I think we solved the problem the temp is where it should be the fan is on the car is idling normal 